Hello my friends and welcome to the channel. Fantastic to have you. Thank you for subscribing. Basically, I've seen lots of new subscribers lately, so I'm upping the number of videos we're doing every week, trying to increase it by around about 50%. There is so much happening in the battery industry, in the renewable energy industry, in the electric car industry, in the positive news industry. I hate mainstream media. It's all about clickbait. It's all about making you think everything's going to hell in a handbasket when it's not. It's not. The world is actually getting better in spite even of the current coronavirus pandemic. Now, great news for Tesla. Tesla has been affected by semiconductor chip shortages and Elon Musk has moaned about it lately. For good reason, I understand he's moaning. He has a fair point. Frustration, isn't it? Frustrating to be affected by one small part of a car to not be able to put cars out to the market to sell cars. Obviously, Tesla is massively cons supply constrained, especially right now in the United States. For many different models in the United States right now, if you want to get one, you've got to wait up to six months. Now, this is the reason why many Tesla vehicles in the United States are more expensive to buy secondhand than they are new. That's a true story. That's a fact. I made a video about it. I'll put it in the description below so you can have a look at it if you want to. But I mean, my question here for you is, would you buy a Tesla vehicle secondhand for more money? Two years old, right? Two-year-old cars are selling for more than new ones because there's such a long wait and a lot of people don't want to wait for a Tesla vehicle. Why is it such a long wait? Well, more than anything, it comes down to the semiconductor supply shortages. Now, there's other issues as well, like Tesla just can't make enough cars in some models, but that is the number one issue. And I've made a video on how Tesla has actually been able to pivot to some degree to avoid some of the impact of the semiconductor chip shortage on the automotive industry. I'll put that in the description below. That video has been seen by, I think, over 80,000 people now. Now, Tesla has admitted that they will be significantly affected over the next 12 months by semiconductor supply chain chip shortages, and that that is a significant issue for the business. So the great news here is that Tesla's key supplier, Samsung Electronics, has reportedly selected Taylor in Texas as the site of its upcoming 17 billion US dollar chip plant. Now, it just happens to be only about half an hour's drive away from Tesla's Austin, Texas factory. Is this a coincidence? I think not. I mean, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Samsung also builds batteries. Maybe there's something going on there as well. We'll build you a chip factory, so you won't have any supply chain shortages for your semiconductor chips forever. And, you buy some batteries off us, you buy some more components off us, you give us some more orders, etc., etc. Now, the company is reportedly going to meet with the city's authorities on Wednesday to discuss the new facility's construction details. So they're getting into it as quickly as they can. Now, Samsung's $17 billion chip plant is quite impressive. Why is it impressive? Well, it's planned to be built in a 51.7 million square foot location, meaning this new facility in Taylor in Texas will be four times the size of the company's Austin facility, which was affected by the state's power issues earlier this year. Interestingly, though, the proposed Taylor, Texas site is just 40 minutes away from, well, 30 to 40 minutes away, depending on how fast you drive, from Gigafactory, Texas, which obviously is going to need a metric shit ton of semiconductor chips when it starts vehicle production very soon. So I'm betting that Tesla's hoping Samsung can build their factory as quickly as possible. Now, Samsung, like I said, is one of Tesla's key suppliers. The chips used in Tesla's full self-driving computer are produced at Samsung's Austin site. And considering that work is underway to develop the second iteration of Tesla's full self-driving computer, in fact, work is underway to develop the second and the third iterations. This would mean that it's very likely that Samsung's current facility is busy supplying chips for vehicles like the Cybertruck, which has already been announced to feature Tesla's upcoming hardware 4.0 computer. Not sure what the 4.0 computer is. Well, it's basically a much better version of Tesla's full self-driving current chip, which actually is already pretty much industry leading. So the fact that they're already working on a new version, which that new version will come out with the Cybertruck, and I believe in a range of different cars as early as the middle of next year is pretty damn impressive. Now, according to Tesla Rati, which I've received a lot of the information for this video from, the upcoming Samsung plant in Taylor, Texas is expected to have a number of benefits. Now, the Taylor Independent School District office has tentatively approved tax breaks worth 314 million US dollars for the facility over the next 10 years. This is pretty normal. 
pretty normal business thing that happens everywhere. It happens in Germany, happens in the United States, happens in China. So don't be surprised that these kinds of tax breaks happen. Now, documents filed with the Texas Comptroller Office reveal that Samsung is planning to hold the facility's groundbreaking ceremony by Q1 2022, so very soon. And they're planning to start operations in Q4 2024, which is not so soon. That's, uh, well, that's around about three years away, unfortunately. Ouch. Anyway, Samsung has been looking into establishing its $17 billion plant in the Manor Independent School District, which was close to its existing Austin, Texas chip facility. But those plans changed when the Austin plant was forced to close in February due to the state's power issues, which resulted in losses to Samsung of about $350 million US dollars. Now, apparently this experience has resulted in Samsung wanting to build a facility in a different location where they won't be affected by power, possible power outages in future. I don't know if that's true. I No one knows if that's true. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who knows? Now, this undisclosed person who has reported on this information has said that if you set up the new facility in a location away from the Austin plant, it could cost Samsung more for the supply of water and electricity and the establishment of other infrastructure. But the advantage is that it can operate the line in a more stable manner. Now, just to give you some sort of comparison here, 51.7 million square feet is 1,187 acres. For comparison's sake, Tesla's facility in Austin measures 2,100 acres. So it's just over half the size of Tesla's Gigafactory. That's enormous for a chip factory. Now, I think that the Texas power issues are dramatically overblown. Let's be frank, a once in a generation storm hit Texas. This power thing in Texas has been blown out of proportion for, maybe for political purposes, potentially, do you think so? It's getting to the point of being ridiculous. Now, some people didn't have power for three to four days, but they also had a foot of snow on the ground for all of that time. In a place that pretty much never gets below freezing in the middle of night for all of winter. It was the kind of storm that hasn't happened in more than 50 years. So I don't think it's likely they've decided to build the factory in that location because of this storm. I think it's more to do with tax breaks that were offered by the local council there. Now, I absolutely love this news. I think it's fantastic. The United States ideally needs to source all of its chips for products sold in the US from factories in the United States. Now, personally, I think Tesla will solve autonomous driving by probably middle towards the end of 2023. And after that, Tesla can license its full self-driving system to other automakers and sell its sensors, suite, and Tesla computer together with that license to other automakers if they want to. Should they? I don't know, but they can if they want to. Regardless, I see Tesla utilizing these chips. I see Tesla saying to Samsung, we're going to need a lot more chips than we are utilizing right now. We need a hell of a lot more because autonomy is coming. All of our cars need more chips and we need better ones. We need continued development of these chips. We need to not have any more bottle chain, bottleneck supply chain issues. Now, having the means of production in the United States, this is great for the United States because right now, China basically controls the means of production for electric cars. They pretty much produce 90% of what is going into an electric car in China. Batteries, semiconductor chips, power control units, cells, packs, modules, motors, the list goes on. The more that's done outside of China, the better it is. We don't want to be too dependent on one country. So when I see news like this, I'm definitely pleased. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.